Hi, welcome to another video. So the other day I was discussing this Linear Technologies programmable oscillator. 1 kilohertz to 68 megahertz. And you might have seen on the screen, it's a high frequency square wave and it was ringing. So as recommended by Linear Technologies, I connected a high speed buffer. So this device here, it's a Fairchild Semiconductor UHS, so ultra high speed dual buffer with, with Schmidt trigger inputs. If you're wondering about soldering surface mount components and where I get the PCBs, have a look at my SMD video. Right, so that's the oscillator running into a high speed buffer. I've also got the signal running into an NXP semiconductor's ATF4069 hex inverter. Right, so these are these signals. This yellow one is the original, and you'll see the ringing up here on the leading edge and the falling edge and this green signal channel 2 this is the output from the 4069 hex inverter so if I lay one on top of the other you can see there's a small delay because the 4069 is hex inverter it's running through one buffer then it's being inverted so I'm running it into a second buffer to invert it back so we've got the same orientation so you can see there's a small delay in the order of a few nanoseconds. Look at this rising edge on the 4069. Although it's slow, there's no ringing. So as you can see, I've set the oscillator at 500 kilohertz, so half a megahertz. And if you look at the overshoot reading on the scope, it says 40%. Although the rise and fall time, three nanoseconds, 3 to 4 nanoseconds. So I think, great, I'll just keep the 4069 inverter, which is fine until I wind up the frequency. Right, I've set the frequency up to just over 1 megahertz, you see, and we've still got pronounced ringing on the leading edge and falling edge. Or well, the 4069, although it's slightly curved, rounded off, is still performing at 1 meg. You can see there's the overshoot 42%. And now you can see I've wound the frequency up to 9 megahertz, so we've still got the same massive overshoot. And now at 9 megs, you can see the depreciation in the waveform from the 4069 inverter. Just can't keep up at these sorts of speeds. If you look at the trailing edge, so I'm on 50 nanoseconds of division. You can see it's taking 25 nanoseconds approximately to rise, whereas the linear technologies just one or two nanoseconds still. Right, so now you can see I've wound the frequency up to 20 megs. The scope is having difficulty reading the overshoot because of the shape has changed drastically. And you can see this is the 4069 inverter, so we've still got a 20 meg frequency here, 20 meg peak, but we've lost our square wave. If your device is reliant upon a fast leading edge or fast rising edge, this isn't going to work. So I've tried forever to get rid of this ringing. Shortened all the leads, increased the filtering using capacitors, and nothing worked. No matter what I did, this ringing stayed the same. So I thought I had to have some fundamental fault. So the answer turned out to be this earth lead. So, if you look at the expensive earth leads, like at Farnell for example, you can take off this earth lead, I'll demonstrate. Remove this. Remove this clip. And on this earth connection down here, you can get a little coiled spring to give you a short earth path to the device. So I made up my own, just using some solid hookup wire. What I'll do. It made no difference incidentally. Linear technology said drive it with a high speed buffer to match the capacitance, that sort of stuff. This Fairchild semiconductor, it's an ultra high speed dual buffer Schmidt trigger and it's got an input capacitance of 2.5 picofarad and a rise time of something in the order of 2 to 3 nanoseconds max. So although I've been showing you the signal on the scope, Ideally it should have come from this oscillator, but
but this buffer is just buffering it and is not changing the signal at all. So what I'll do using my coiled spring setup, I'll now eliminate the long earth lead on this scope rope and put this in here. There we are, I've got two springs so I can let go of the probe and just mess it out. And there we are back on the scope, so we're still on 20 megs. And look, all the ringing is gone. So the question is, was that ringing ever there? And the answer, the quick answer is no, it was never there. You've got a tiny bit of overshoot, but we were, we were in the order of 40%. It's now fluctuating between 6 and 80%, which I think is perfectly acceptable. So if I now get this inverter, that's a 4069 inverter. I'll lay that over the top of that. You can see it's become so slow, it's almost 180 degrees out of phase. Look, but that's another tip for the, for the beginners. If you want a few nanosecond delay line, you just put a buffer, and depending on your choice of buffer, you get different delays. This is going through the 4069 twice, we are effectively delaying it by 180 degrees nearly. So I'll get rid of that waveform. And there's our original signal buffered through the ultra high speed Fairchild semiconductor. And we've got a nice square wave. Starting to round off at 20 megs, but that's acceptable. And if you look on the side here, so it's six, seven percent overshoot, the rise time through that buffer as well, one to two point two nanoseconds, and the fall time, two point two was flipped. I saw one there, two point two nanoseconds, and it's through the buffer as well. So obviously, if you're looking at buffers, look at the speed. You can look at the propagation delays, which is the time it takes to go in on one pin and out on the other. That's the oscillator, in case you haven't seen my other video, LTC 6903, 1kHz, 68 megs. So I've now wound the frequency up to 45 megs, that's the 4069, we've still got a bit of a peak there, I've had to turn the amplitude up, that's where it was, so 1 volt of division on that. But as you see, we've still got the overshoot, it's up at 10%, 9-10%, we've still got the fast two nanosecond rise time through that high speed buffer and finally we're up at the maximum frequency of that oscillator 68 megahertz so we've got 10 11 percent overshoot i think that's acceptable at that frequency and still a rapid rise time remember this is coming through that high speed buffer and the funny thing is the 4069 is giving us a little square wave there, 68 megs. So obviously the advantage with the surface mount technology, the small packages, the input capacitance is low, the inductance on the boards and leads are low. And finally getting rid of this long earth lead, cleared up half of the ringing. Thank you for watching.